Episode 8 of The Last of Us, When We Are In Need, was unbelievably shocking on a number of different decisions that the showrunners made. I thought that we had a bad run in terms of episode 3 and episode 7 and a few sprinkled in between, but this episode made some extremely shocking decisions and we're going to get into them. Before we do, if you could hit subscribe, that'd be awesome and let's see if we can trigger some more blue haired people. After the fiasco of episode 7, we finally return to Joel. You remember him? He was the person that the game was built around him and Ellie's relationship. All right, yeah. So we return to Joel. He's still bedridden. Ellie's got to go out and hunt and shoot some deer to try keep the show on the road. She crosses paths with this vengeful group led by David, who's extremely creepy in the game. Not as creepy in here, except for the pedo element that they added in, which was kind of weird. And again, it coincided with the fact that I guess he was Christian. That's what LA showrunners think of in terms of cultish behavior. It's got to be affiliated with Christians. All you got to do is look at the comment section in any negative review for this show and you will see a real cult. An interesting note is David's friend here played by Troy Baker who I was actually shocked when I saw him because he looked so much like what I thought Joel was. Pedro Pascal was cast as Joel and what everyone thought straight away was well Joel isn't from South America. That's what everyone thought, right? But because Pedro Pascal is this really good actor, he came in and he did a decent job. Now, unfortunately for him, I believe they have done him a complete and utter disservice because the script for Joel is garbage. Nobody wants to see Joel having panic attacks and crying and being all emotional and being demasculized and actually not even doing one badass thing through the entire show. He threw in a few punches and killed one or two guys. That's it. That's what they were talking about when they said they were going to reduce the violence of this show. In other words, you're going to turn Joel's character into a cuck that would probably soften the blow when he gets killed by Abby. So you're looking at Troy Baker and he's like extremely old and gruff looking. He's got the beard. I'm talking like shorten that hair up get a little bit of muscle on him and why can't he play the role of Joel in this HBO show? I know what you're going to say. Well, we need a big star to sell this show and we need a really good actor. Is Pedro Pascal a better actor? Of course, he's a brilliant actor. But the disservice that's been done to him, why not just put another actor in there? What's the difference? You've totally cocked him anyway. We would have had an, an authentic sounding looking Joel with Troy Baker. And to be honest with you, the acting chops were there or thereabouts last night. It's been a rare few occasions when Pedro Pascal has got the capacity to open up his acting scale here when he did that he was pretty much crying like a bitch so there's not really much in it troy baker could easily have been the cock soy boy that follies ellie around while she does all the badass stuff in this show easily have done it i would have been happy with that the problem with this show is that it's just so boring that's basically it you know, we've heard the showrunners talk about extracting the violence out of this game and emphasizing more on the drama side of it. Unfortunately, that's not what they did because the drama stuff works in this show. It actually works to an extent. Where they dropped the ball completely, doing gay filler episodes that take up way too much time. Today, CBR announced that the finale of this show is going to be 42 minutes long, the shortest episode in the entire season. And you can't help but ask yourself whether you're a neutral of this show, whether you're a fan of this show, whether you're a blue haired freak who thinks that everything with an LGBTQ flag is brilliant and deserves a 10 out of 10. You can't help but ask yourself if the final episode of this season is going to be 42 minutes long with so much of the narrative to cram in there could we not have used some of the hour and 39 minutes i believe for episode 3 could that not have been used for the actual story for the actual last of us instead of some random weird gay love story is that not a possibility could we not have had a decent fleshed out story? Maybe some more action scenes? You can't help but ask these. People that refuse to have this conversation in terms of we are heading into the finale of this show and it's going to be 42 minutes long. They're going to have to try condense hours of gameplay into 42 minutes. So inevitably people are going to be upset with the final product unless they leave us on some random cliffhanger where Joel returns in season two only to get his head caved in with a golf club. Unless they do that... I think a lot of people are going to be upset. And the first thing people are going to say is that they rushed it here. They dropped the ball and they rushed it because there has been almost two and a half hours of LGBTQ.ie storytelling forced into this series for absolutely no reason. And we could have seen this relationship between Ellie and Joel really expand. Now, would that have happened? I don't think so because even when we do get scenes between Joel and Ellie, they're just turning Joel into a cock. 
He's literally crying. He's barely able to move. And even in this episode, when Joel finally gets up out of bed, you're waiting for him to move through the whole episode. And even when the guys were like creeping into the house and he was lying in the basement and you could hear the cupboard been creaked across the floor, I was thinking it's not beyond the writers of this show to just leave Joel sit there and get hockeyed and get broke up completely. Because the idea of him getting up and being a badass just it's almost beyond this show at this point. So he gets up and he engages in the scene from the game, which if you watch the cutaways of the game, has been done way better. It's as simple as that. You know, Joel in the game, the interrogation scene, the cracking down on top of the head with the lead pipe, it's all done way better. So then you cut back to Ellie and this David freak, this Christian pedophile cannibal, and the interrogation scene between the two of them when Ellie is locked up in a cage, it's still not better than what was done in the game. We know that Ellie can hold her own, especially with this freak, and she does it in the game, and she does it almost exactly the same here in the episode, and I didn't have a problem with that. But what I did have a problem with was on the periphery of this engagement between Ellie and David, we have Joel outside. He's barely able to stand up. He's falling over. He looks like a 90-year-old man wandering around in a park suffering from dementia, and there's not one other person around. And I'm like going, in terms of the scale of the show and the budget, is there anyone else here for Joel to fight? Or does he wander around in a barn on his own, wait for Ellie to kick ass, and then the show ends with the two of them engaging outside and embracing? That's exactly what we got here with this episode. And you feel left down. When the credits rolled, I felt deflated and left down. Where the fuck is Joel being a badass? We have Ellie being a badass. I'm perfectly fine with that. She chopped the dude up, and rightly so. But Joel's wandering around outside, all anxious and depressed and nervous and everything. That's not Joel. This is not The Last of Us. And as an overall take on this episode and this show, it's not The Last of Us. It's as simple as that. Why make the show based on the game if the game is going to be better? It leaves us in this extremely precarious situation where no matter who you are or what side of the fence you land on, I believe that when we get to the finale of this series, people are going to be left down seriously. And what will happen then is the cognitive dissonance will start to wear off. And when we are disappointed at the end of the finale, we look back and we'll say we were disappointed with this element, we were disappointed with that element. And that's something that I'm actually seeing in the mainstream media press surrounding this. There is a number of reviews and there is a number of of articles coming out actually talking about how episode one was really awesome when they stuck to the source material almost shot for shot that was really good but since then they've dropped the ball and i think that in the coming weeks we will see more and more of these reviews and more and more of the media turning on this show you can say all you want about how high the ratings are you can say about how much this show is loved i guarantee that as the weeks transpire after this finale people will start turning on this show, and rightly so. Let me know your thoughts down below. Maybe hit subscribe and share out the video. I appreciate you. Cheers.